back live from Los Angeles. Good morning, Lala. We are so excited to have Burrell Wilkes, who is an epic human being. He's an author. He's an entrepreneur. He's been everywhere. You can't believe it. He's up to all kinds of things with Mayweather, new fitness club. And you have a great book. It's called Tattoos on My Soul, From the Ghetto to the Top of the World. And you have an incredible life story. Please tell us a little bit about it. Well, as you said, I came from the ghetto streets to the executive suites. <laughs> you know, west side of Chicago. It was a, it was a different type of life. You know, it was a cheap life. It was a life that uh, I see so many people get lost in because you know what? They want the love from the streets, but you got to remember one thing: it's a price that go along with having the love from the streets. So I say do it the right way because in life there's no shortcuts. I'll be here all day, all week telling you about the different journeys I've been through, but here's the beauty of it. I was able to come out clean on the other side and I created a company called Burrell Streetwise back in the days. It was for the people that had fallen in between the cracks because see, I'm not for the greedy, I'm for the needy. And I always want to reach and pull people up that is in that life because I know it's a tough life. And again, you never ever get no love when you come from there. But what's it like? What's it like to be like in a gang, right, on the mm -hmm. streets? Like, what is that like? Is it as intense as, as people say it is? I haven't been there. You know? Well, definitely. It's definitely intense because what come with that is, um, you know, penitentiary mm -hmm. and death. Mm -hmm. That's all will come with that. It's either you're lucky you go to the penitentiary, and if you're not so lucky, you go to the graveyard. Wow. So there's no in-between when you play from the streets. So that's why I tell all the young guys, you know, change your life around. And a lot of guys with a voice, they call them gang chiefs, you know, teach them how to do the right thing. If you don't know, reach out and ask. Call the king, because I see around a lot of people, they need a real life coach, and I am life coaching with no <laughs> sugar coating. I give it to them straight. Burl, Let them know just how it is. What was it about you, though, that allowed you to escape that life? Well... I have to be honest with you, I had three powerful men in my life. One was my dad, one was Tony Ricardo, which was Al Capone's right-hand man, and one was another guy by the name of God, which was his name was Burrell. And everybody that knows God know who God is, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, I said that to say they talked against the streets. They always told me how well I did in the streets, so I should really pull back. And you know what? I decided to listen at the age of 16. I stopped breaking the law and stopped bending it. And bending it is like betting on a basketball game and not reporting <laughs> earnings. And then I stopped bending the law at 24, and I'm 50 now, going on 51. I go to the lighting cross now. I don't bend or break. Wow. Yeah. So there must have been some skills that you learned on the street, though, <clears throat> that are been probably really handy in, in the marketplace, in, in loving life, and in going the distance without breaking the law? You know what? To answer that question, yes, you can say that again. The lessons <laughs> I learned from the street, see, that's what gets you conditioned for the real world, you know, because you don't snap, crackle, and pop so fast. You follow me? Mm -hmm. You start to think before you move. And the lessons that I've learned from the street is play fair. See, you have to always play fair. Even when it looks like you're not playing fair, mm -hmm. just knowing your heart, you're playing fair, and it just didn't work out the way that you had planned. Mm -hmm. But always keep in mind, and it goes for everybody in the world. You never forget who you owe and who owe you. So if you owe someone, take care of them. And if they owe you, you know what? Don't press them, because you wouldn't want no one pressing you if you owe them. But always call them and keep in touch, and just try to do what you can do, just to get your tab clean, because that's what's important, and that's a trade that you have to know to move around the world. And when you know that trade, guess what? You'll live a long time and you'll live a bright life and you'll be able to smile. But like really, like you are balling with Mayweather. We're talking about the top, the top, the top, like VIP scene. What is it, what's your trick? Like what is it that goes, okay, Burrell, I want, I want you on my team. Like what is that? Well, I have to be honest with you. You know, <laughs> real recognize real and I love chap. Mayweather is one of my best friends and he's like my brother. And I'm going to tell you something about him. That guy is incredible. He's a smart thinker. He's a smart mover. He's a reflection of myself. And when you find someone a reflection of yourself, it's not where you're from. It's how you come. And that's what makes me and him so solid and locked in. I'm talking about playing at the top because I take a guy like himself. He came from the ghetto. And here's a guy that did it on his own 
with a great team around him, no doubt. But here's a guy that make over three hundred fifty million in thirty five minutes. I don't know <laughs> one personally do that. Not even myself. So, so how did so, you? And he doesn't him. drink. He doesn't don't drink. Like, don't smoke. Just, he just think. It, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he know how to move and groove. And the great thing about Mayweather, he handpick his team. You know, that's the great thing about life, to be in that position and say, you know what, this is who I want, and this is who I want. He always going to pick the best of the best because, why? Wow, we are the best. So how did your paths cross? How did our paths cross? By a guy by the name of Hayes, dear friend of ours. Uh, he's passed on and, you know, it, it, it makes me feel a little funny inside because I love him. I miss him so much. But what happened with him and his wife, I don't condone that, you know. He um, basically took his wife's life and uh, his own life. And, you know, that was a touching moment for me because today I still wonder, wow, what was happening in there because I didn't see that coming and I'm yeah. sure no one else seen it coming because Hayes wasn't a violent guy. He was a real cool, smooth, had everyone laughing, you know? So, But that's you know, who you work with. That. You work yeah. with big names, big ballers, big yes. players, whatever, and they call you up and they go, I need some help. I need some guidance. Like things are not going well. It might be going well in their money, but then it might be going terrible in their relationship or they might be going through millions of dollars but not being able to keep it or whatever, right? That's why they come to you for coaching. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you know, the wonderful thing is we all go through what we go through. The name of the game is pulling back. You, you know, life is like a rubber band. Just long, You can stretch it as much as you can just as long as you don't pop it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And a lot of times we have a lot of people in our life that we love, but we know that they're sparrows. And see, you never fly with the sparrows. You always have to fly with the eagles because we soar. You follow what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, that's what life is all about. And we have to make that change. We have to be able to just say no. And we have to say, are we true to ourselves? And when you're true to yourself, then you can automatically be true to others. Mm, you know? powerful. Yeah. Love that. You know, uh, I love Floyd Mayweather, obviously, you know, mm-hmm. and one of the things I love about him is, um, you know, he's such a he's such a smart boxer, right? He's such yeah. a strategic boxer, and it's often overlooked how mm-hmm. intelligent of a boxer he is. And, um, he, but he's also got really incredible marketing and advertising skills as well, right? So yes. he understands the entire business. And I see that like perfectly reflected, obviously, in you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So did these business skills that you've built to such an incredible degree because you've had so many, you know, incredible, successful businesses, two, you know, awesome books. Did those business skills develop slowly over time or were there certain things that you had to be more intentional about developing, like the marketing and advertising? You probably, did you always understand that piece of it or is it something that just built itself organically over time? You know Guess what? I, mean? what? I have to be honest with yeah. you. When you come from the ghetto, yeah. that's just a skill you mm-hmm. automatically pick up because, you know, when you're doing wrong, you know you have to do right. Mm-hmm. So you automatically become very skillful. Yeah. You follow yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Just moving and grooving <laughs> between, yeah. Yeah. you know, the wolves and the hyenas. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they're on both sides. So you pick that up. <laughs> yeah. You follow yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you want to live road. another day, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's all about, you know, marketing. Yeah. And you have to know how to market. You have to know, see, again, Chicago is a very very territorial place. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Chicago, it's all a political battle. A lot of people say, man, I don't want to go to the Windy City. It's cold as hell there. But you know what the Windy City means? It's politics. Exactly. A lot of windbag politicians. Yeah. 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 That's why I mean that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, you know, you learn that from the streets to answer your question. You know, it just automatically you hone that skill and you just carry it around with you everywhere you go. Yeah. And the world is my oyster. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what's up. Yeah. Love that, man. For yeah. sure. Yeah. So we're going to take a break in a, in, in a couple minutes. But I want to ask you, for somebody out there that is still, like, they've not come to the place where they are living in the light, if you will, or maybe they're breaking the rules, or maybe they're on the streets or whatever, what advice would you give them? I tell them, hey, listen here, again, you got two choices, death or the penitentiary. Now, I'm sure, you know, even younger guys, they have families now, you know, I know kids 16 years old got two and three kids already. So you have to just look back and say, I know you're gonna say to yourself, you know what, I gotta do what I gotta do because I gotta support my family. But while you're saying that, yeah, that's true. Do it the right way so you can see your family. Mm -hmm. Because when you check out, most of the time, people from the ghetto, when you are the breadwinner, guess what? When you go, everything collapses. 
So you got to think about that collapsing part and do it the right way. Yeah, it might be slow, but it's for sure. So what, what do you mean? Go to college or go, go what? What does legal. that look like? Do something legal. Do something legal. Do something Whatever legal, whether is. it's going to college. Because a lot of people say, I can't go to college now because I'm not getting paid and I got to pay bills. Well, guess what? I call that put a factory up while you're on the job. Go work for somebody, but learn something you can do for yourself. So when they get to going, then you can go to your job and tell them, you know, I quit because I put a factory up all the <laughs> <Yeah, I'm good. laughs> So, you know, you, you win both ways. I so, agree. yeah, yeah, school, I love school. I never was one that went to school. I learned just by riding down the street, reading billboards, and happening to be around people that went to school and was intelligent, and then I pick it up from them. Me, my school was in the streets. You follow what I'm saying? So I learned it from there. But guess what? At the end of the day, when I got older and started getting into businesses, I said, wow, I pay these attorneys. What if I'd have went to school? I wouldn't have to pay these attorneys. I'd have saved money there. So I always say, go and get the brain shaped. You follow what I'm saying? Got it. Right. Yeah. So let's take a break because when we come back, I want to find out about a couple things. I want to pick your brain because I know you are in the cannabis and it's legal now. So mm -hmm. this is a legal business, okay? <laughs> and you are obviously have launched um, a soft opening of of the new gym. So let's. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to dive deep into those incredibly fascinating topics, okay? Yes. So stay tuned, you guys. We'll be right back. Great.